In the mid-1960s, Steve McQueen was the coolest actor in Hollywood. Born on March 24, 1930, in Beech Grove, Indiana, Terrence Stephen McQueen was raised on a Missouri farm, but by 12, he moved to Los Angeles and proved to be a rebel. When McQueen came to Los Angeles, he got into a lot of trouble because he had this horrible relationship with his stepfather, who would beat him, and then he would go out into the streets and just stay out there. He would steal hubcaps, play pool. I mean, he was, he was lack of a better word, a delinquent. After being in the U.S. Marines for three years, McQueen was honorably discharged in 1950 and used his GI Bill to study acting. He went down to Sandy Meisner's acting school, the neighborhood playhouse, and Meisner liked his look. He put him on stage with the girl and he said to the girl, he whispered in her ear, slap him in the face during this improvisation. And so she did, and Steve punched her in the face and knocked her out. Uh, Meisner thought this was the greatest discovery since Marlon Brando, and he got him into the actor's studio, and that led to Steve getting uh, TV work. McQueen had his first breakout role in 1958 on television on the Western series Wanted Dead or Alive, and one year later scored a major film hit with The Magnificent Seven. Magnificent Seven was not McQueen's breakout movie, but it did give him sort of an A-list status. By the end of the movie, you knew clearly who the star was, and it wasn't Yul Brenner who had earned an Academy Award. It was this young upstart named Steve McQueen. McQueen cemented his star status in the 1963 film The Great Escape, and followed it with the Cincinnati Kid and the war film The Sand Pebbles, which earned him his only Academy Award nomination. Steve McQueen was underestimated as an actor because he really played a certain type, but he really was able to give more depth to the role, especially in a film like The Sand Pebbles. In the late 60s and early 70s, McQueen became synonymous with action movies after starring in films like The Thomas Crown Affair, Bullet, and The Getaway, which co-starred his future wife, Ally McGraw. Ally McGraw was the number one box office star in America married to Bob Evans, the head of Paramount, and her image was that of a wholesome, sweet girl because of a film that made her a star, Love Story. She took one look at Steve McQueen and just fell head over heels for him. McQueen's work was praised in Papillon and The Towering Inferno, and he continued to work even after a cancer diagnosis in 1979. On November 7, 1980, McQueen died in Ciudad Juarez, Mexico, after undergoing experimental surgery for tumor removal. I think Steve McQueen was really one of the last of really the great Hollywood stars. McQueen has a huge body of work that you could look at now and you can see that just how consistent he was and the kind type of persona he developed, and you don't get that anymore.